wanted to do something completely different today, guys. We've had a ton of questions about what we were doing out in New York and what's happening with the footage. And I also want to, oh, I want to show you something really cool as well. Essentially, if you missed it, we were over in New York recording with some of the best bass players in the world and doing courses for the Academy over at Scott's Bass Lessons, which is the membership at Scott's Bass Lessons and is essentially what we, we, me, him, and all the other guys, as we run the uh, world's biggest online educational platform for bass players. It is super cool, so make sure you check it out if you haven't already. DMAC, what are you doing? Um, editing the uh, Rufus Philpox course. So this is Rufus Philpott's course. It's uh, coming out, when's it coming out? Next month? Yeah. So we're going to be releasing those throughout the year. So if you're an Academy member, you've got some awesome, awesome courses to look forward to. In fact, I'm going to show you, in fact, I'm going to give you a full lesson from Cody. Actually, we'll go, in, we'll go into that in a minute. My nose is whistling when I'm breathing. It's going, hmm, hmm. Anyway, one of the courses that we've just released this month was from the amazing Cody Wright. Now, if you haven't heard of Cody before, he's one of the guys to look out for right now. He's just a phenomenal bass player, incredible musician, and we were really, really lucky to get him to New York in January and do the, uh, do the course with us because he's always super busy touring. Like he does stuff with the Jonathan Scales Orchestra. He does stuff with Eric Gales. <laughs> He's just a super busy dude, and he filmed this entire course for everybody uh, over in the Scots Bass Lessons membership, which I'm going to show you actually in this video. But before we get into that, what a lot of Cody's course is actually talking about the blues. One thing that you will hear many, many educators talk about is the importance of learning jazz, right? And, and getting into that not because really you have to be into jazz to be a great musician, but because jazz itself is a really great learning tool. Now the key thing is, I really think that the blues is the perfect way to get that into your practice. Where did jazz come from? Jazz came from the blues. So the blues can really give you that same sort of experience, which is why I really recommend that Whoever you are, whatever music you're into, you should be checking out blues chord sequences because they're such a great learning tool in themselves. And man, you know, if you turn up at a jam session, who's not gonna call out a blues, right? Which is why actually I created the blues course for the Scots Bass Lessons membership where I'm in the studio with uh So if you're an Academy member, make sure you check, check that out as well. But what I thought would be cool for this video is if I show you two secret notes that you might not know that you can add in to the regular old blue scale that a lot of us already know. We'll go over what the blue scale is super quick, but I'm going to show you two secret notes that will really, really spice things up for you. Okay, let's get into it. And before we get into this, I've done a sexy download for you. A PDF with it all in tab and notation so you can get it. The link is below this video. Click the link, do the thing, and then you'll get the tab and the PDF so you can actually understand what I'm talking about. Let's do this. Okay, so we all know the blues scale, right? It's that scale we instinctively learn when we pick up an instrument because we've just heard it so many times before. Something's rattling. Right, so that's the regular blues scale. Let me just go through that just in case you don't know it at all, right? So it's just, let's say an E blues scale. Just the root, minor third, fourth, flat five, five, flat seven, root. E, in this case, G, 
A, B flat, B, D, E. But there's these two wicked notes that you can add in just to really spice up the entire thing and just give you a little bit more, <coughs> I don't know, just a bit more sexy to it, right? So, that's the, 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 the E blues scale, okay? And make sure you're really getting the, get milk in that. That flat five there. Check this out, right? So the first sexy note that you should look at adding in is just the second of the scale. So here's the scale. That's just the one octave scale, right? But if we add in the second note of the minor scale, which in this case is an F sharp, but we'll just think of it as the second, right? a little bit more for me just it is that because you can get that so that's the first note that you can add into the regular blues scale just to give it a bit more spice a bit more sexy a bit more sexy. The next one is the sixth of the minor scale. One, two, three, four, five, six. So in, we're, we're doing this in E, right? On an E minor, on an E blue scale. That next one is the sixth of the blue scale. Now you can add in the ninth. as well and I'm adding in that C sharp and just use it over a little vamp. Find out where they are on the fretboard and get that into your plane. Now, I know a lot of you have been asking about the Cody Wright course. We've just released it last week. Well, I thought it'd be cool if I just, you know, let you watch a full lesson from the course where Cody is talking about the importance of the blues and how to get it into your plane. And if anybody can hear that, the hail is back. Okay, so now guys, I'm gonna show you a lesson from Cody Wright's course. And the cool thing about this is that Cody is talking about the specific notes I've just been talking about, but he's gonna show you a really cool use, especially when moving to the sixth of the scale over a blues progression. It's really, really cool. It was really funny when I watched it. I was like, oh, I'm gonna try that out. And he does something epic over the five chord. You're gonna love it. Um, I'll let him take it away. Let's do it, Cody. So I'm gonna set the looper, and, and first of all, I'm just gonna set it and uh, go from there. Thank you. 
Okay. So now that we have the looper on, the two interesting uh, things that I like to do to alter the blue scale. So on the one, I'm gonna stop it for a second. On the one, I'm just going, I'm just doing things that are basically just sticking around. Sticking around the blue scale, and, and sometimes I'll have the the nine in there too, the two or the nine. But the one of the most important things to pay attention to is when it goes to the four, when it goes to the A. Immediately, the major third, if you know interval theory, the major third of the A is this uh, C sharp note right here, or D flat. So I'll start playing in a way that accents that. And once it goes back to the one, I don't really hang on that so much. I might, you know, switch back to favoring my dominant seven, which is the D note that has this sound over E. Oh, don't. This guy here. But so when it switches to the four, I'm into that sound. So you hear me do that. So to take that from there, when it goes to the five, to my B, I'm gonna accent the major third of the B, which is an E flat. That E flat, if you're thinking in E minor, all of a sudden, I've got basically a melodic minor scale or a melodic minor mode, you know? Or harmonic minor. So it's really cool to just incorporate all those ideas together. So to recap, when I go to the four, which is the A, I start playing my C sharp here on the D string or wherever I'm at. So I'm gonna show you. E blues. And now, and now when it goes back to the E, I go to the seven. And now, when it goes to the B, I know it happened really quickly. When it goes to the B, I'm hitting the E flat and then after you know when I first learned that I was still playing very bluesy stuff on guitar like Stevie Ray Vaughan type stuff and I just start out by like normally where I go do my normal blues licks all of a sudden I was starting to just change all my roots to the the uh, half step below when the five chord was happening, you know. So that's a really cool way to, to accent the change. And then from there, I started to use passing tones that lead up to those types of tones. You know, stuff like that. And then all of a sudden, it, it becomes its own whole little world. So I'm going to go out on uh, just giving a little example of some of that stuff. And notice that when I switch to the bridge pickup of my bass, I'm no longer muting the strings. Thank you. 
go check it out. <laughs> Can you see it against the roof? If you haven't already checked out scottsbasesessence.com and the membership, go do so and grab your 14 day free trial. You can try out everything for 14 days. All of the courses we've got, we do a live stream seminar with some of the best base educators every single Monday. We've got a killing community in there. What else have we got in there, DMAC? Hmm? What else have we got in there? Mm. Well, look, at, look at that scared face. <laughs> what else have we got in the academy? Um, we've got... Useless! <laughs> We've got a lot in there. Useless! <laughs> Fired! <laughs> anyway guys, as always, uh, take it easy. I'll put a link underneath if you want to check out the, uh, if you want to check out Scott's Space Lessons and grab your free trial. Take it easy and I will see you in the shed. Whoa, 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 where are you going? If you haven't subscribed to the Scott's Space Lessons channel yet here on YouTube, click the link, subscribe. I release two videos like this every single week. You can also check out our other videos over there. And if you've not checked out scottsbaselessons.com membership, check it out. You can grab your 14-day free trial over there.